Be sure to follow my ministry on BitChute and Rumble because this channel could disappear any day. Links are in my pinned comment below. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless welcome to the watchman channel this channel is all about world news and bible prophecy pointing to the soon return of our lord and savior jesus christ being transgender is at odds with science and god's design as we read in genesis 126 and 27 then god said let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. Somehow, in some mysterious and wonderful way, the human male and female, in both body and spirit, are the image and likeness of God. Satan hates mankind because we are created in God's image. He is sowing confusion in the minds of our children. And he is busy in these last days devouring those who are not steadfast in the faith, as we read in 1 Peter 5, 8-11. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. President Biden is wasting no time. He's signing more than 30 executive orders and actions since taking office last week, as presidents these days mostly do when they start their terms. Today, President Biden overturned the ban on transgender Americans serving in the military, an order that President Trump put into place back in 2017 when he came into office. Now, some who have wanted to serve their country but couldn't should soon again have the opportunity to do so. And one of them joins us now. Nicholas Talbot is one of the plaintiffs in a federal court case that challenged Trump's ban uh, on the transgender Americans serving in the military. Good afternoon, Nick. Hi, thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. So, uh, what was your reaction when you heard the President Biden came through on a campaign province and uh, overturned this ban? I am absolutely thrilled that President Biden has come through on this promise and overturned the transgender military ban. I have been trying to enlist in the United States military for years, um, either in the U.S. Air Force or in the Army ROTC program, which I participated in for approximately a year. Um, so I am just absolutely thrilled to finally be able to get the chance and be judged on nothing but my merits and my abilities. And Nick, you weren't in the military yet when the ban started. So what made you decide to take legal action against it? This is something that I've wanted to do for my entire life. Um, I was in the process of enlisting in the ban, and the opportunity to take legal action just presented itself. Um, I was asked to join the cause, and I decided it was time for me to stop sitting on the sidelines and to really take more of a leadership role in doing something that I truly believe in. And Nick, can you tell us a little bit about your journey, about, about what inspired you uh, to seek uh, to serve the country in, in the military and how you got to where you are on that? And, and also, you know, how, how you think this will impact transgender Americans in general, even those who don't go into the military? Absolutely. Like I said, military service is something I've been interested in for a very long time. Um, I have been a college student for a very long time as well. My field of specialty is uh, global security and counterterrorism, and I really feel like I have a lot to offer the military in that area. Um, and I feel like the military has a lot to offer me as well as far as experience. And I think that the overturning of this military ban is huge for transgender people all across the board, because this really sends the message that we are just like everybody else. We are as capable, as qualified, as willing as anybody else is, and we should be treated just like everyone else. Deuteronomy 22.5 A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. Isaiah 520 
Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. We now live in an Isaiah 520 world where evil is good and good is evil, where the sin of being a homosexual or transgender is openly celebrated and even glorified. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of homosexuality that is sweeping the world today. Jesus said he would return at a time when society parallels the days of Lot, as we read in Luke 17, 28 through 30. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. To find out what parallels our days with the days of Lot, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis 19, 1 through 5. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and said, My lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly, so they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast and baked them leavened bread, and they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. The term know them isn't a friendly handshake and how are you. It is to know them in a sexual way. What parallels our days with the days of Lot is homosexuality. All right, now to our GMA cover story. Dance mom star Jojo Siwa coming out as part of the LGBTQ community to her millions of fans saying she has never been happier. Many calling her announcement incredibly meaningful. And Will Reeve is back with more of her story. Hey, Will. Hello again, Amy. Jojo Siwa is absolutely massive. She's got 30 million TikTok followers, 10 million more on Instagram. She's known and adored for being bubbly and fun and relatable, and now she's sharing her most authentic self, and her fans love her even more. I am really, really, <laughs> I'm really happy. That's and, uh... teen sensation Jojo Siwa, radiating joy after sharing her truth. She's part of the LGBTQ community. You guys probably haven't seen me <laughs> this happy since I was on tour. Siwa, a singer, actor, and YouTube superstar, isn't putting a specific label on her sexual orientation. She's gotten support from her parents and gay celebrities like Lil Nas X and Ellen DeGeneres. Right now, I'm super duper happy, and I want to share everything with the world I really do, but I also want to keep things in my life private until they're ready to be public. Right now, what matters is that you guys know that no matter who you love, that it's okay and that it's awesome and that the world is there for you. Speculation swirled when the 17 year old posted this TikTok dancing to Born This Way and this picture she tweeted providing further proof. Say hi, girls. Hi, everyone. Siwa first got attention as part of the popular Dance Mom series. Do you think I could replace Chloe? Her effervescent personality and her big bows made her a phenomenon. She's sold out stadiums on national tours appeared on game shows and released her own music. Her YouTube page alone attracting 12 million subscribers. Siwa is aware of her massive platform. This weekend, she retweeted messages about the example she sets and the role model many young LGBTQ people will see her as. GLAD President Sarah Kate Ellis said Siwa's story is a reminder for LGBTQ youth to love who they are and to find safe and welcoming environments to speak out. The support for JoJo continues to roll in, including from her former instructor and star of Dance Moms, Abby Lee Miller, who posted, quote, I always knew the world would be a more colorful, positive, sparkly place with a kind, loving, dazzling triple threat like you in it. A shining example for the best for the kids out there to live their best lives each and every day. Amy. Yeah, a shining example indeed. You can see how happy she is as well. Just as in the days of Lot, not only is homosexuality widely accepted today, but it's being taught to our kids, just like in Sodom, as we read in verse 4. The men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, 
surrounded the house. There are many people within the church who are teaching that homosexuality is not a sin, when scripture clearly says it is. This is another sign Jesus gave to look for prior to his second coming, as we read in Matthew 24, 11. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Homosexuality is strongly condemned in the Bible. Ezekiel 16, 49-50 Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, and an abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw fit. What was this prideful abomination committed before God? The answer is found in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 18.22 You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20.13 If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death their blood shall be upon them. God gives mankind a dire warning for the acts of homosexuality in 2 Peter 2.6 and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. God also offers forgiveness to those who are living a life of homosexuality as we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. This morning, the cleanup after a rare January tornado ripped an unforgiving path through Fultondale, Alabama. For nearly three miles, shredding neighborhoods in the Birmingham suburb, leaving some with just seconds to take cover. Right there, Sue and Steve Gambla were staying at this Hampton Inn. I figured it was safer to be in the bathroom and, and, and pray that we're okay. More than a dozen people rushed to the hospital as crews combed the debris for more survivors. The storm claimed at least one life, 14-year-old Elliot Hernandez at home with family. The house had collapsed um, from the wind, rain, trees. Others left to attempt their own rescues. When Weta DeWine got to her son's house, this was all she found. Start calling this name, just said Mike, Mike. Buried in a pile of rubble, miraculously still alive. And he said, all I remember was something put me up in the air and the next I was gone. As many brave severe storms in the south, Elsewhere, it's winter weather sweeping much of the country, dumping snow from Las Vegas to Chicago, Wisconsin to Kansas. That winter wallop now barreling down on the Northeast. In Connecticut, the snow did not slow COVID vaccines. The state's largest drive through vaccination site still buzzing. Out west in California, the problem is rain and a lot of it. Some areas could see up to 15 inches over the next two days. That is prompting evacuation orders in two counties because of the threat of dangerous mudslides in areas burned by massive wildfires. And back here in Fultondale, the National Weather Service has determined that it was an EF3 tornado that touched down, causing all of this damage. In some cases, Craig, bringing wind gusts of up to 150 miles per hour. As we look at the news, there is no doubt we are in the birth pains Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24, 8. We see many of God's remedial judgments manifesting, as if God is warning us of things to come and calling on people to repent. We see war and rumors of wars, famine and pestilence resulting in the deaths of thousands around the world. We are seeing earthquakes, extreme heat, floods, wildfires, tornadoes, hailstorms and hurricanes, all at record levels of frequency and intensity, just like Jesus said would happen just prior to his return. The judgments God will use to punish mankind with during the seven year tribulation will be much worse than any of us can imagine. Still, this is God's grace and mercy, proving to everyone that these judgments come from him 
and he is still offering forgiveness of sins through his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I implore you to do so today as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. The U.S. military is expanding its forces in Saudi Arabia to counter any possible attacks by Iran or even in the event of a war with Iran. This coming from top brass. Meantime, Iranian leaders are waiting to see if the Biden administration will rejoin the JCPOA agreement. RT's John Huddy is bringing us the latest developments there. The Pentagon reached a deal with Riyadh to use various Saudi air bases and the country's western seaports for U.S. military forces, essentially as staging areas in the event of a war with Iran. The U.S. military has kept thousands of troops and aircraft in various parts of the Gulf region, including permanent bases in Qatar, Kuwait, the UAE, and Bahrain. But Iran's ballistic missile capabilities have evolved along with its attack drone capabilities, so those bases have become more vulnerable to attack. General Frank McKenzie, head of U.S. Central Command, or CENTCOM, said in interviews that the new U.S. bases in the Western Gulf region, on the Red Sea and Arabian Peninsula, are not being used as a buildup for a war with Iran, but rather giving the U.S. military alternatives and options to keep U.S. personnel and equipment out of Iranian missile and drone range. The U.S. military plans in Saudi Arabia have been going on for about a year, but this is the first time it's been made public. And it comes as the Biden administration has talked about rejoining the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or JCPOA, under certain conditions. The Trump administration pulled the U.S. out of the deal back in 2018. And speaking of the JCPOA, today Russia and Iran signed what's called an information security agreement, basically an agreement to work together and cooperate on cybersecurity issues. And during the signing and press statements after, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov encouraged the United States to rejoin the JCPOA. Back to the U.S. and Saudi ties, the Biden administration has said it will take a more critical approach to the Saudi kingdom, though this increased military cooperation also signals how serious the new U.S. administration is taking the potential for a war with Iran. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. Minutes after Joe Biden was sworn in as U.S. President last week, Israel's Prime Minister released a congratulatory video referencing a warm personal friendship and also his government's immediate priority for the new administration. And to confront common challenges, chief among them the threat posed by Iran. On Tuesday, Israel's top general turned up the volume, saying he was preparing new attack plans targeting Iran. I have instructed the IDF to prepare several operational plans in addition to existing ones, which we will develop throughout the coming year. The power to initiate them lies with the political echelon. However, the offensive options need to be prepared, ready and on the table. The general warned the new U.S. administration that returning to the Iran nuclear deal from which Donald Trump withdrew in 2018 would be a mistake that would allow Iran to develop a nuclear weapon. Even if there's a similar agreement with a few improvements, it is operationally and strategically wrong. It's operationally wrong because it will again allow at its end or even beforehand Iran to enrich uranium, to develop centrifuges, to develop even the capabilities of the weapons until developing a bomb. The message was delivered on the same day that Joe Biden's pick for Secretary of State was confirmed by the U.S. Senate. Last week, Antony Blinken signaled that the U.S. was not preparing to rush back into the deal and would consult with Israel and other regional allies on its policy. For its part, Iran says time is short for the U.S. to revive the deal known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or JCPOA. Iran is still reeling from a series of blows inflicted during the last year of the Trump administration, including the U.S. assassination of its most revered military figure, Qasem Soleimani, and the killing of its chief nuclear scientist, Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, which Tehran attributes to Israel. For Israel, the shift away from Trump's hard line on Iran is a major foreign policy challenge, provoking a debate about whether the government should confront the Biden administration publicly or lobby behind the scenes. In this instance, the public confrontation has come from the head of its army. Ezekiel 38, 1 through 9. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. 
and I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great host, all of them with buckler and shield, wielding swords, Persia, Cush, and Put are with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his hordes, Beth Garma from the uttermost parts of the north with all his hordes, many peoples are with you. Be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered. In the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war, the land whose people were gathered from many peoples upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. You will advance, coming on like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your hordes, and many peoples with you. These are the modern day nations in Ezekiel 38 and 39 that many people believe will be mustered in the latter years to attack Israel, Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Sudan, and Ethiopia. God tells us exactly what will happen to Iran, Russia, Turkey, and the many peoples with you when they attack Israel in Ezekiel 38, 18 through 23, and 39 to 7 and 8. And it will come to pass at the same time when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. So that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him into judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nation shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, says the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. I've been informed by top-ranking military officials that Israel has been unable to launch even a single plane in defense. As I stand here, fighter planes are exploding in midair. They're crashing and falling to the ground without any explanation. And while no one can seem to give me any reason for why this is happening, I can tell you this. This all-out, unprecedented attempt to destroy Israel appears to be failing. God is the one who fights this battle for Israel. He does it for two reasons. To make his holy name known in the midst of his people Israel, that the nation shall know that he is the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Zechariah 2, 8, 9. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoiled for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Israel is precious to Almighty God, the apple of his eye. He is simply saying, You touch my chosen nation Israel, you poke me in the eye. Is Vladimir Putin, the infamous Gog of Magog, that the prophet Ezekiel warned would come on the scene in the last days and lead a coalition of nations to destroy Israel? Or could Gog be Recep Tayyip Erdogan, another dictator who is fast gaining power and dominance in the Middle East? Biblical scholars can't agree if the prophet Ezekiel was talking about a last day's assault on Israel being led by Russia or Turkey. Many popular Bible teachers claim that Gog will come from Russia, while others claim that Ezekiel's prophecy actually points to Turkey. Whether Gog is from Russia or Turkey, both nations are presently being led by undisputed dictators who could each very easily fit the Gog profile. A long forgotten prophecy that has recently been rediscovered by Bill Salas may enlighten us about the fate of Iran's current nuclear aspirations as we read in Jeremiah 49, 34-39. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against Elam in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the foremost of their might. In this prophecy, Jeremiah predicts that Iran will suffer the fate of a broken bow, which might imply that the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps will be unable to launch scores of its missiles at its enemies. Additionally, 
He declares that Iran will be struck at the foremost place of its might, which today could infer an attack upon its nuclear program. One of Iran's most strategic and vulnerable nuclear targets is the Bushehr nuclear reactor, located in the heart of ancient Elam. Jeremiah continues in verses 36 and 37. Against Elam I will bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and scatter them toward all those winds. There shall be no nations where the outcasts of Elam will not go. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies, and before those who seek their life. I will bring disaster upon them, my fierce anger, says the Lord, and I will send the sword after them, until I have consumed them. Jeremiah informs that the attack upon the ancient territory of Elam will produce numerous refugees, perhaps even turning into a humanitarian crisis. Exiles will be dispersed worldwide as if being blown about by overpowering winds. In addition to the Lord, Iran has enemies in this prophecy. Israel seeks to prevent Iran from becoming a nuclear nation. Additionally, Jeremiah says that Iran has fiercely angered the Lord, and that provokes the Lord to cause a severe disaster inside of Iran. Perhaps this alludes to a nuclear disaster caused from a strike upon Iran's Boucher nuclear reactor. As we get closer to the rapture, the tribulation, and the second coming of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will reveal to students of Bible prophecy the relevance of additional overlooked prophecies concerning the end times. Is the prophecy of Elam one of those prophecies? Stay tuned as we watch Bible prophecy unfold right before our very eyes. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work, you may be asleep, God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance but it is one of the results of genuine, faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.